Welcome to the Human Health Campus Basic Nuclear Medicine Webinar Series. This webinar is entitled Basic Radiopharmaceutical Dosimetry and is presented by Manuel Bardier from Cancer Research Centre of Toulouse in France. I'm pleased to present this seminar to you on behalf of the Nuclear Medicine and Diagnostic Imaging Section of the International Atomic Energy Agency in collaboration with the European Association of Nuclear Medicine. As we know, nuclear medicine is mostly a diagnostic specialty and therefore the amount of radiation involved is low and only stochastic effect can be put in evidence. Whereas for therapy, large amount of activity are uh, injected and therefore deterministic effect can occur. Obviously, for diagnostic or therapy, different levels of accuracy are required in order to process and to derive the dosimetry. However, both for therapy and diagnostic, we're going to use the same formalism, and that's a MERD formalism. MERD stands for Medical Internal Radiation Dose Committee. It's a committee of the American Society of Nuclear Medicine. It has produced so far 26 pamphlets that are articles describing a methodology, how to reach a given result, 20 dose estimate reports that give for a given radiopharmaceutical the absorbed dose per unit injected activity, and three reference books. In fact, the MERD formalism provides a global scheme for nuclear medicine dosimetry. This is a formalism. Assume a source of radiation of energy E0 that emits isotropically in infinite homogeneous medium. If, at a distance x from the emission point, the absorbed energy in a small volume is E, then the absorbed fraction is E, absorbed energy, divided by E0, emitted energy. And as we can see, the absorbed fraction is dimensionless. It's a very useful parameter because it varies between 0 and 1. It gives an idea of the efficiency of the irradiation. To compare different absorbed fractions in different media, then it is usual to divide the absorbed fraction by the mass dm of the small volume of interest. And we get phi capital phi, that's a specific absorbed fraction that is expressed in gram minus 1. The absorbed dose, as we know, is the energy divided by the mass of the volume where the energy is deposited. It is in joule per kilogram or gray. In the context of a MERD formalism, the absorbed dose is just the emitted energy E0 multiplied by the absorbed fraction divided by the mass or just the emitted energy E0 multiplied by the specific absorbed fraction. If we think in terms of volume and define a source, H, where the activity or all the emissions are homogeneously distributed and a target, K, where the absorbed dose is computed, then the mean absorbed dose in target, K, from source, H, is just E divided by the mass of the target or, as we've seen before, E0 multiplied by the specific absorbed fraction from the source to the target. When we think of radiation, there are different possibilities. But if we assume that for a given radiation and a given volume, most or all of the emitted energy is absorbed locally, this is the definition of non-penetrating radiation. And according to the formalism, it can be written as the, uh, the absorbed fraction in the target from the source is zero when source and target are different, or the absorbed fraction from the source to the target is one when source and target are the same. In that context, the absorbed dose is very easy to compute. Uh, if source and targets are the same, it's just the emitted energy divided by the mass and it's zero in all other situations. An important point to notice is that the character of penetrating or non-penetrating radiation is not only depending on the radiation, but also 
of the volume of interest because it depends on both organ size and particle range. For example, some electron or beta can be non-penetrating for organs and they can be penetrating for cells of the same organs. So far we've been considering a radiation emission of energy E0. As we know, radionuclides emit several types of particles and for each type of radiation different energies. So we have to take all that into account with EI, the energy particle type I, and I, the number of particles of type I emitted per decay, and delta I, with K is a conversion factor, is just a product of the number of particles uh, per decay by the energy particle. And therefore we reach delta, and delta is just the energy emitted per decay. It's expressed in uh, joule uh, per uh, disintegration or per decay. So if we consider now uh, radioactivity, uh, we have uh, the emitted activity at time t, that's a h in target in the, the source h, and uh, the absorbed dose rate, and that's uh, written with a little dot on, uh, on the top of a d, the absorbed dose rate at time t in target k from source h is equal to the activity times the sum for all radiation of type I of the probability of emission and I, the energy EI and the specific absorbed fraction capital Phi I. So we can express uh, the absorbed dose rate as the product of the activity emitted at time t, uh, delta that's the energy emitted per decay if we compute, if we're able to compute a specific absorbed fraction for that isotope and capital Phi. So the activity in the source is measured or assessed uh, in nuclear medicine department by imaging or counting. We know very well the delta because it's a characteristic of the isotope and obviously the difficulty is to assess the specific absorbed fraction. So if we account for the time then the absorbed dose is the integral of the absorbed dose rate over the time and therefore we take the former equation and uh, we have to integrate between zero that is considered as the injection time and infinite that is when all the radioactivity has been washed away and we obtain the absorbed dose the mean absorbed dose in gray in the target k from the source h so if we make a very important assumption, that is that all the parameters uh, that do not depend on time are excluded from the integral symbol, then we obtain the equation above which gives the absorbed dose as a function of k and the sum for all the type of particle of the emitted energy by uh, the specific absorbed fraction. And we assume that this doesn't change with time multiplied by the integral from zero to infinity of the activity as a function of time. So if we see the curve of variation of the activity as a function of time, uh, that integral is just the area under the curve. So we define the cumulated activity, and that's a very improper name for something that is not an activity, that is the integral of the activity as a function of time, and that is expressed in Becquerel second. And as Becquerel are decay per second, in fact, the accumulated activity or time integral of the activity is just the number of decay that occurred from time zero to infinity. So the accumulated activity is a total number of decay occurring in the source. Uh, lower limit is zero, upper limit is infinite, and uh, in fact, what we can obtain the accumulated activity from pharmacokinetic data, where we have activity at different time point, and we integrate and uh, to get the area under the curve. An important concept is that of residence time. The residence time is obtained by dividing uh, the accumulated activity by the injected activity. And as the accumulated activity is expressed in Becquerel second and the injected activity is in Becquerel, what we get is a time 
because it's expressed in second and that defines the residence time. To put it over in another way, the residence time is just a means to compare the accumulated activity in different patients uh, for the same injected activity or for different injected activity. So we get to the fundamental equation of the mode formalism that says that for a source H where radioactivity is homogeneously distributed uh, and for a target K at a distance from the source, the mean absorbed dose to the target from the source is equal to K, a constant, multiplied by the accumulated activity in the source H, multiplied by the sum for all the type I of radiation of the probability of emission by the energy emitted by the specific absorbed fraction from the source to the target for that specific radiation I. So if for a given problem, uh, because K and E are very specific and very well known, uh, that's specific of isotope and it's very well known, uh, five a specific absorbed fraction depends on the geometry and radionuclide data and the accumulated activity just coming from radiopharmaceutical kinetics. So if we group all terms independent of time, we define the so-called S factor or S value. And as we can see, the S value is just the mean absorbed dose per unit accumulated activity. In other words, it's the mean absorbed dose in uh, target K from source H for one decay in the source H. So there are different ways to express the Merth simplified equation. Uh, most famous one is the D equal AS, that's written here at the top right, but you can also express the absorbed dose per unit injected activity, and that is the residence time multiplied by the S value. So, using the MERT scheme is, in fact, taking into account where the radiopharmaceutical goes in the body, because obviously from one radiopharmaceutical to another, we will have different source of radiation and we will have to consider different targets. So, for a given problem, for each target K of interest, you have to identify the source H and basically you have no choice on the sources. The sources are just where the radioactivity goes. And then you derive the accumulated activity of the residence time for the sources. You get the relevant S values and you have to sum all the contribution to the irradiation of target K as is expressed in the equation at the, at the bottom. So, by D, using D equal AS, we're going to see different possibilities or different ways of uh, doing some clinical dosimetry. And uh, in fact, the, the absorbed dose D that we're going to obtain will obviously depend on the way A tidal, the accumulated activity, and S, the S value is obtained. So uh, the first step for di diagnostic. In general, for diagnostic, and this is the ICRP approach, the accumulated activity is obtained from a subset or a group of patients or sometimes healthy volunteers or sometimes extrapolated from animals and then some uh, compartmental modeling is made in order to derive the variation of the activity as a function of time for the different volumes of interest. And one important thing to remember is that this is obtained for a group, it's not for a single individual. The S value is obtained for models. Here you've got some mathematical model representation of a human being. So here again, it's not obtained for an individual, it's obtained for a model. And therefore, the absorbed dose that is obtained is obtained for a model, and so it's valid only for a model and not for an individual or a given patient. So think of a model. There's been a very important evolution in time from the ICRU spheres of the 1950s to the MERD uh, models that are mathematical model. We now have voxel-based models and we're moving in the direction of hybrid model. How does that translate 
in ICRU report or ICRP report for radiation safety in diagnostics. We've got the adult male from Snyder in 1975. We've got the pediatric series of Christie and Eckerman, still mathematical, published in 1987. And we also have a Stabin model of adult female and pregnant female, published in 1995. And the evolution is to go in the direction of voxel-based model, like the new ICRP 110 reference adult male and female. We're waiting for the pediatric series from Florida to be endorsed by the ICRP. And there's also some new models of pregnant female that are available for computation if needed. So a conclusion for diagnostic is A is for group S is from a model. So this is model-based dosimetry. We're now moving in the direction of therapy with this uh, nice movie that uh, concludes uh, a cost action uh, sponsored by the European Union and that illustrates uh, peptide therapy with a peptide and a chelate with uh, lutetium-177 has the nucleus of uh, lutetium and uh, the electrons and per decay we have the electrons, beta, that are emitted, and a gamma. So this is uh, a peptide loaded, so to speak. And uh, this is, um, we're going to see how it is injected in the patient. So the product goes in the bloodstream. And in the bloodstream, we can see that the peptides are going to be distributed in the body. And uh, with the vascularization, it's going to reach the ugly tumor that is here. So we're going to zoom and uh, we're going to see at the microscopic level, the peptide is going to reach its receptor and is integrated in the cell. And if it decays at the moment, then the electron is going to kill the, the cell. And we're going to see, boom, the tumor cell that explodes and uh, little by little the tumor is going to shrink and fortunately we have the uh, gamma emission and the gamma can be uh, detected uh, by a gamma camera and here we have an illustration of a uh, specced image that can be acquired and uh, this is after some days after the first injection and we see the uptake of the tumor and after the second injection the tumor has disappeared. So again, so this is the, the address where you can download uh, that uh, video which I believe is very interesting and informative for a public audience. So moving in direction of the um, dosimetry in the context of therapy. So the first thing we want to be as accurate as possible so obviously, uh, we have to compute the accumulated activity in a specific way. And so that relies on uh, quantitative imaging, centigraphic quantitative imaging, which, as we know, is uh, everything but easy. So a lot of people and a lot of research has been uh, and still are going on in order to be able to assess the variation of the activity in the patient as a function of time. And so this is just a reference for uh, MERD pamphlet 23 uh, that explicitly addresses the uh, quantitative spect, so in 3D, for dosimetry in internal radiation uh, therapy. So the second step um, is that we can try to use the S factors from the model and to adjust that to a specific patient. And uh, this is possible by, for example, balancing the S value obtained from a model by the ratio of the organ mass of a model and of a specific patient. And that is working uh, and it gives a S factor that is accurate on average to some percent. So that's really interesting to be able to do this and uh, for as already also built in uh, Olinda so there is in Olinda a way to change the mass from the reference uh, of a phantom for example is uh, one kilo 
910 grams uh, for the liver of the adult male and you can change that value to whatever mass the liver of your actual patient is. So something to bear in mind obviously is that if we're using uh, S values that are adjusted from a model what we end up with is not a specific uh, absorbed dose but it's a model uh, absorbed dose that is more or less realistic. So if we want to have a fully patient specific dosimetry then all the steps have to be specific. So accumulated activity uh, the, um, determination, S-value calculation, and uh, absorb those. Everything has to be done in a specific way. So, on principle, in principle, is not uh, that is not impossible. We can use a spec that is going to give us the activity present in the body at the voxel level eventually. And we also have a patient CT, especially with hybrid imaging, and that is going to give us the medium where radiation propagates. So we may not need to have an explicit computation of S value for a given patient. We just use uh, patient CT and spec data to directly compute the absorbed dose, voxel based, at the level of the patient. This is actually quite, uh, this has been proposed uh, many years ago, as we can see in uh, 1995. And even though at the time it was only convolution, so assuming homogeneous medium, you can see that all the methodology was already proposed uh, many, many years ago. And based on that, uh, several codes are available. So these are academic code, so it's not FDA approved but uh, it can be used in a context of research. So we have RMDP from the Royal Marsden in, uh, in London. We have NUCDOS, that is more recent uh, software from Würzburg. Uh, and these, are, these two software are based on um, convolution to derive the absorbed dose. Here is an example with uh, Ray Dose, that's a Monte Carlo based calculation. So this is based on GN4. And that has been uh, that came from uh, Cardiff uh, by uh, Marcatili and collaborator, and a recent example also based on GN4 by the team of uh, Mike Stabin in Vanderbilt uh, with uh, GN4 based Monte Carlo calculation can be used at the left for S value computation for uh, models of patient and have a right to derive patient-specific dosimetry. So, as a, as a summary, I mean, if we look at the MUD formalism, the practical implication of a D equal AS is that the accumulated activity and the S-value determination have to be assessed with an equivalent accuracy. Uh, what was existing some uh, years ago is that it was basically not possible to derive S values because it was too time consuming and required computers, computing power that was not available. Uh, but in fact the situation has changed. So now it's basically possible to compute S values for any isotope and at any scale. So I would say that at the moment the most challenging part is uh, to derive the activity and the cumulated activity. And obviously that depends on the clinical application. But assessing uh, the uncertainties at every step of uh, clinical dosimetry is uh, the battlefront, so to speak, at the moment. And I would like to draw your attention in direction of a European project sponsored by the metrology uh, labs at the European level so Metro MRT was recently completed, but you can find the results at that web address. And there's a new project that is going to start and uh, also led by the NPL, uh, the British Metrology Laboratory. In um, 2009, the MERD committee published a new nomenclature uh, that is somehow in between the nomenclature proposed by the MERD in the primer in 1991 
and uh, the nomenclature used in ICRP publication. So I'm not going to go through all of this, uh, but these are, you've got in that publication, uh, different colon with the uh, same variable defined in ICRP, the MERD primer and the new MERD pamphlet 21 nomenclature. Uh, very quickly, these two equations are actually equivalent. So what the new nomenclature does is, is that it makes explicit mention of irradiation time uh, TD and it's more ICRP compliant. Um, I'd like to draw your attention in for some variables, for example, the time integrated activity that used to be the accumulated activity and it's capital A tilde and the time integrated activity coefficient that's little a tilde and that's uh, former residence time. So as we can see, there are possibilities to make uh, exquisite mistake. Uh, so we have to be very careful in using the new nomenclature, but it's uh, apparently under revision, so it's likely to change in the future. So we are reaching the conclusion. Uh, the MERT scheme is a reference formalism in nuclear medicine dosimetry. It's very general. And we have to be careful, the MERD scheme is different from the MERD S values. Uh, for example, the MERD S values published in pamphlet 11. Um, for example, if we're not happy with the S values available in table, uh, we can always uh, recompute or set of S values for a given problem. The MERD scheme is valid as a formalism at every scale. Uh, so, we are able to use the D equal AS formalism uh, for preclinical dosimetry if needed. So, uh, an important point is that because the MERD scheme is so general, uh, writing in a paper that uh, dosimetry was performed or using the MERD scheme is not sufficient. When reporting how dosimetry was performed, you have to explicitly mention how activity was assessed, how cumulated activity was obtained, how S values were computed. And there is a guideline that was published by the ENM dosimetry committee that gives information about this. So I'd like to conclude that lecture by just an example, like an exercise with uh, computing the absorbed dose for a diagnostic radiopharmaceutical labeled with uh, iodine 1 to 3. So in the situation of an adult male injected with 74 megabecquerel of a radiopharmaceutical and some activity was seen in the liver, small intestine, upper large intestine and lower large intestine with the residence times that are given in hours in the table to the right. Then uh, we have S values obtained from the website of uh, dosinfo-radar.com that gives uh, for different couples of uh, source and target the absorbed dose per decay expressed in milligray per megabecquerel per second. So questions. Uh, does the radiation from the liver comes from the liver uptake only? or from the liver uptake mostly, or from the upper large intestine content mostly, or only function of residence time uh, contribution. And uh, so the answer of that is that it comes from the liver uptake mostly, which means that all the sources are going to contribute to the irradiation of the liver as a function of the residence time but also of the S values, so which is why the answer 4 is wrong. So it's not one, it's not only the liver, it's not the upper large intestine, uh, it's mostly the liver, and it's some, a feature that we're going to see in most dosimetric uh, situation. Basically, as long as an organ is a source, the irradiation from the organ comes first and most importantly from the source itself. Then, how to compute the absorbed dose to the liver? So, we have the equation, and the absorbed dose to the liver is the sum of all the contribution from all the sources. So, this means that the absorbed dose to the liver 
is uh, due to the, resi uh, the activity that's present in the liver through the accumulated activity multiplied by the S value liver to liver plus the accumulated activity in the small intestine multiplied by the S value small intestine to liver plus activity, accumulated activity in the upper large intestine multiplied by the S value upper large intestine to liver plus accumulated activity lower large intestine multiplied by the S value lower large intestine to the liver. And all contribution should be accounted for. So the S values are given in milligray per meg uh, megabecrel per second. Uh, but how do I uh, choose which is which? In other words, are the sources uh, sorted in the horizontal line or in the column? And something important is to see uh, the small intestine, for example, we have a content. So the small intestine content has to be the source. So the sources are horizontal. And the table is not symmetric, even though it looks like it. Um, and uh, we don't need all the values. We, all need, we, we only need the source to liver value that basically are the first line. So we're going to use that equation because we're given the residence time, T, and uh, we have the injected activity, A0. So if we make the conversion of the residence time from hour to second, uh, we obtain the absorbed dose per unit injected activity for the four contribution. Uh, so for the liver as a target, but from the liver as a source, the small intestine, the upper large intestine and the lower large intestine <coughs> as a source. And uh, as we can see, we have a different contribution, but by far, the most important one is the radiation that comes from the liver. Uh, we have for 74 um, megabecrel injected an absorbed dose of uh, 3 milligray that is really low and that is normal because we are in a diagnostic uh, context. Okay, this concluded uh, this lecture and um, so I hope I've uh, managed to give some uh, relevant information on basic radiopharmaceutical dosimetry and I thank you for listening to that uh, webinar.